So, um, my name is Sao Xiong, and uh, yeah, I do go. So, um, what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you from building up a web service, a very, very simple, basic web service, and I'll show it to you how it's done in, uh, as a standalone. Then I'm going to show how it's being published on Heroku, and then I'm going to show how it's being published on Google App Engine. Right, so I'm going to show uh, these few things. So let me just show you very quickly the web service. Can you see it? Is that okay? Yeah. Very simple one with a strut uh, main. This is a, a web service. This is a multiplex multiplexer that multiplexes um, the different methods. So all the HTTP methods are get in. So get, post, put, and delete. So you have a get. You have a post, you have a put, and you have a delete, right? Um, the database, I'm using Postgres on uh, Elephant SQL, and basically it's just plain SQL. There's no extra libraries that I'm using. Right? So the, basically the only third-party library is the database driver, okay? So let's get into here. I built this guy and then uh, sorry. So what I did was I, I just rebooted and uh, it was wow <laughs> Okay, never mind. It's not the first time this happened to me this week anyway. Okay, so um basically I let me let me do that again. Uh, I build it and then I run this. Right, and uh, let me just show you. So I have a some test scripts here. This will create, this will retrieve. So let me uh, create a post here. Running curl, I will create a post and it returns two hundred. Okay, so let me go to. Uh, Directly to Elephant SQL, not local host. There's a reason for that because I'm going to use the same database for oh. Heroku and uh, for not for Heroku, so it's, it's easier. Right, right. got it. I'm, it's free, so you can actually play around with it. This was all previously set up, so I'm you know, just going to dive in again. Uh, where was it? Right, so we just created a post 13. So now let me do a get shit. Sorry. Let me do a get. and you get the idea so you get the idea basically it's a very simple web service so let me step on to Heroku next Heroku it's uh, so Heroku it's if for those of you who do not know, is a platform as a service. It's one of the earliest paths, uh, one of the easiest paths, and I would say it's one of the better paths around, uh, very independent. Um, and the other one that I'm going to show you later, Google App Engine, is also a pass, but that has a different feel to it. So that's the reason why I'm showing you this too. Um, for Heroku, you don't really need to change much of the code. So as I will show you here um, under server, the only thing that I actually just need to do to change is basically this. Instead of previously I was using um, 8080, now I just use os.getenv port. Basically, I'm getting the uh, environment variable, the port environment variable, which is supplied by Heroku. 
and then everything else is done. Okay, so um, I can run it locally. Basically, what it means is I can try to set up everything nicely locally first. Uh, when it runs nicely, mm -hmm. what well, I'll go in, I'll change the environment variable, and everything else should work fine on Heroku once I push it up. Okay, the other thing that you need to set up is of course a proc file. Uh, uh, basically, a proc file sets up the uh, executable that needs to be run. So when you push up the um, files from here, uh, from your local, what Heroku will do, it will compile your files, and once it has been compiled, it will need to set it up to, to run whichever one, uh, thing that you want to run. So um, to run it as a web application, you need to specify what app it is that you want to run. So for me, it's a WS-H, so I set up the profile as WS-H. Okay. So as you see here, there is no change as well. It also goes up to Elephant SQL. All right. So um, what I need to do is I need to first add, I need to push it up to uh, Heroku. So I need to uh, do a git, oh, sorry, git init. So I initialize this as a uh, git repository. I need to add it. It's initial uh, thing. Hey. Oh, sorry, I'm in mean, the wrong folder. Sorry. Yep. Let's just close the other one. Okay, I'll just leave it alone here. So I added everything. Oops, yeah, sorry. I knew there was something I forgot to say. Um, to add on the dependencies for Heroku, Heroku uses something called a GoDap. Go so you need to install GoDap first. You need to go go get GoDap. And after that, what you do is just say um, GoDap save. And what it will do is it will generate this directory, GoDaps, and it will automatically create this file. And what it does is it will set up all of these things for you, including your uh, dependencies. You see here, the only dependency I have is on Postgres uh, library. So it will uh, do the import path for me. And it would add the, uh, the source code here as well. So it adds the uh, uh, Postgres source code here. <coughs> it's quite a bit, but uh, yeah. So everything is bundled into one. And we are ready to go. So with here, you need to install the Heroku tool, bag, tool belt. After you install the tool belt, what you do is Heroku um, create. Well, really create from scratch. <laughs> yeah. So you will create a Heroku app for you. Uh, then after that, Heroku push. Uh, Can you use it? Git push? Oh, git push. Heroku master. And then it will push the app up. Just give it a short while. It's deploying. Magic, magic. One point five. Live. Okay, so it's deployed. So what I'll do is I need to, uh, of course it, it's a web service, it doesn't have a GUI. So what I need to do is I need to use the same testing thing that I used early on. Um, so let me now try to create This guy, where is it? Here. Post. It should create a post with the ID 14. Yes. Right, 200, okay. So I execute this again. Yeah. 214. Right, so basically what I've done is I've created, used the same uh, web service and I've pushed it up to Heroku and it's, it's live now.
right? So that's Heroku, it's pretty simple. The two main things you need to do is number one, you need to change the port, and number two, you need to uh, run Godap, in, and uh, that will actually bundle all your dependencies into a subdirectory, and then after that, you just push out the Heroku and you're done. Uh, this is now, I think maybe a couple of months ago, it wasn't as simple as this. They, in fact, um, Go, sorry, Heroku did not support Go directly. Now it does. Uh, previously, you need to uh, get a Heroku build pack and then uh, install it in the, uh, I think, what they call a zero build pack and then uh, go from scratch and go up. So now it's a lot easier. Okay, so this is uh, Heroku with, with uh, Google App Engine. Sorry, Heroku. Uh, sorry, this is Go with uh, Heroku. Heroku. Now I'll talk about Go with Google App Engine. So I have this. Now Google App Engine is a little bit different from um, any from many of the other uh, pass around. So here we go. The Google App Engine is kind of uh, a closed pass. Um, it is very powerful. It is very scalable, but you have to use everything from Google or most things from Google. In fact, you can't actually use a network port outside of the Google App Engine, right? So, uh, some libraries that you intend to use, uh, or some service, external service you intend to use, you you actually cannot use it. For example, the Elephant SQL uh, database I was using early on, I cannot use it from Google App Engine. So, if you want to use a, a relational database, you have to use Google's relational database, which they do provide. But unfortunately, it's MySQL. Um, something which I don't use anymore. So uh, let me just show you what it means. So a couple of things you need to do, you need to actually change the, um, the code as well. So previously you will see my, the code in the standalone as well as in the Heroku. I'll just do a quick comparison here. Package main, uh, but now it's package something else, right? Uh, package GWP uh, P here. And previously I had a main function, as you know, Go applications need to have a main function, um, but this doesn't need to have a main function. In fact, it cannot have a main function. Um, what it, in place of a main function, you use an init function. For those of you who know about Go, um, init is basically the uh, function that will initialize whatever things that you run for your package. So in fact, instead of deploying a standalone independent application, what you are deploying to Google App Engine is a package, it's a Go package. That's why it's a package called G GWP, right? That's why you can't have main, because the main is owned by Google. The main is not owned by you, right? You are a tenant, really a tenant in the uh, Google Pass, which is unlike Heroku. Heroku, you have the entire uh, ecosystem. Here, you don't, right? Basically, this is the only thing you need to change. Um, you need to do away with your, your main. Uh, you need to have init, and everything else can remain the same. The other thing that I changed here, of course, is uh, oh sorry, wrong file. The other thing I need to, the other thing I changed here is, of course, instead of using Postgres, I'm using uh, MySQL. I'm using this uh, library for MySQL, and I have to switch to using Cloud SQL, right? And of course, everything else I need to change to using MySQL. Whereas most things are the same. Um, of course, the, uh, the syntax is a little bit different. Instead of using $1, $2, two, I'm going to use question marks now. Small, minor thing, but yeah, there's, a, there's uh, some differences. And just like in uh, Heroku, where you have a prop file, you also have something similar. It's called app.yaml. Uh, you have a YAML file that defines what the application is, the version, runtime, and so on and so forth. In reality, you don't change any of these things except the application, right? Uh, and you change the application according to what you need to run here. Okay, I need to go back to this guy. Uh, Console.developers. Right, so basically what you need to do, you, you need to um, create an application here. So I just have this one application. I won't create again because it's actually a bit uh, involved to create and everything. Um, and but basically what you need to do is you need to create the application. After you create the application, 
uh, if you need to use a uh, relational database, then you need to create a something in uh, Cloud SQL. So I, again, I created this uh, Cloud SQL data, um, database table. And there are some other things as well, which is not as uh, straightforward. You basically get some database, but you don't have an uh, external IP address. Right? You don't have an external IP4 V4 address. What you have is an external IP V6 address. So if you want to have IP V4, you can, but you have to pay for it. So there's some of the other uh, smaller intricacies involving it. This is for the database. So let's say if you want to populate the database externally, you have to create an IPv4 address, and then after that you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so this is a database, and uh, that was the application. After you make the changes though, everything else is relatively straightforward. Let's take a look at um, this now. So once you have done that, you can do, I don't want to do two things. You can either say go app, serve, which essentially runs your uh, service locally, but of course it doesn't work for me locally because I don't have MySQL, uh, uh, sorry, I have MySQL installed locally, uh, I don't have all the configuration uh, loaded locally. The other alternative is um, to deploy directly to the Google App Engine itself, so instead of doing go app serve, what I do is go app deploy. It will take a bit of time, but eventually you'll get there. You, know, you scan, you clone, you do whatever things, and then you will push all the things up. So Go App is still supported, not G Cloud App or whatever? So if I step one step back, right, you actually need to download an SDK from Google, and the SDK actually has all these things. I think the original SDK is uh, based on Python, so I think the uh, Go App itself is a Python script. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's relatively fast because if it's a new, completely new app and I need to push it again, it will take some time. But here it is very fast. And let me try that again. Um, so, no, not here, here. Okay. So instead of this, so I have WS. Is it now? The best dash. dash. G dash one two three four dash app spot. By the way, my app is actually WS dash G, but somehow they just add one two three four for me, and um, because I think probably somebody else has WS dash G already. Okay, so I will now. I can't remember what it is. Top HTTP or HTTPS. You will call this guy. He should create an ID fifteen. Yeah. No. It adds some additional stuff on these haters. Uh, let's take a... Okay, you can't really see it. But because it's not Elephant SQL, I don't have a browser into the Cloud SQL. Let me run the other one. Then, um, let me do a curl get. So, HTTP S. SG dash one two three four dash m spot dot com. Okay. So we get fifty. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's no, it's not fifty. Yeah. Yeah. There's one. I think it's two that was created just now. Right. So uh, it's not fifteen. It was because, because fifteen I mean, was elephant on, on elephant scale. Yeah. So I think it was two because I created one early on. Yeah. Right, so this is the difference between Heroku and uh, Google Engine. Both are pass, uh, but Heroku is much more open, and Google App Engine is quite close. But Google App Engine has a lot of advantages. It has a number of libraries that are built in, and it has a lot of uh, services that are uh, available from Google. Uh, whereas Heroku, you don't have really have anything. Right? You just basically have uh, the plain vanilla server. It manages a number of things for you, and you're very independent. Uh, you're very uh, free to do anything you want, but you have to do a lot of ad additional things if you want, say, uh, uh, a service, then you have to go at Elephant SQL, get something, or, or Postgres, or whatever service that you want. Uh, Google provides a lot of things in the house, but 
you are restricted to using only Google stuff, mostly. So these are the big differences. Any questions? Have you tried using libraries, third-party libraries, which require you to compile to a C library, for example? In Google? In Google engine? or in Heroku and your experience? I've not actually done that, though. Yeah. Yeah, I believe in Heroku it should be okay. Um, basically, they, uh, they give you the uh, playing field to compile whatever you want. And even if you can't, right, you just create your own build pack and yes. then you push it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Google App Engine, you can't. Uh, there are some pitfalls, though, in both Heroku and Google App Engine. I think the Google App Engine is, is pretty evident. Sometimes you don't really think about it, but really you cannot escape from the Google App Engine ecosystem. Right? Like, for example, you can't even uh, go talk to another um, database outside of Google App Engine. You can't talk to um, many other things. You would depend on a service that's external from Google, you cannot ex access it. There are exceptions though. So Google has something called a Google Compute Engine, which is like uh, IAS, right? instead of a pass, it's an IAS. So you can deploy services in there and you are given the leeway to access those. Heroku also has some other issues. Um, one of the things with Heroku is if you're deploying a web application, your web application must start up within 60 seconds. Right. If your application needs a long time to load up, uh, it will never load up. It will, Kiroko will just kill it right? because you are basically sharing infrastructure. And if it takes too long to load up, you will be, you will be killed. The same thing with Google App Engine. But Google App Engine is very apparent, right? You, you behave or you die. Right? Uh, Kiroko, you, you think you have everything, but you don't. So at least there are some bits and pieces that you don't control as well. Yeah, I like think the main disadvantage of Google App Engine, if your customers are in China, China won't be able to get to it. I guess so. I've not tried that really. Yeah. What about the pricing actually uh, between Compute Engine, App Engine, and Heroku? Heroku the same performance about maybe? Uh, it's hard to say because Google App Engine uh, actually automatically scales for you. So that's a big advantage. And some of the tools that we provide automatically scales as well, like. Uh, uh, they have Google Store, I can't remember what store, store engine, whatever they call it. Um, basically, it's a big data storage. It's not the SQL database. Oh, the big table. Some big table thing. So it scales very well. The data scales very well. Um, and the relational database, they also help you to scale and everything. But the uh, competition of how much it costs for you to run on it is so convoluted. It's like quite mind-boggling. I didn't really <laughs> try to sit down and figure out how much it costs to do what. Uh, Heroku is a lot more straightforward, right? Because it's based on Dino. Um, but I think they are also starting to be a little bit more complicated. Now they have free Dinos and then they have some other premium Dinos or whatever. Uh, free Dinos need to sleep for a minimum X number of hours in a day. Otherwise, you know, you'll be charged and things like that. So it could be expensive as well. And then we start uh, workers on Heroku, then um, um, the workers will also take up time and you will not... Um, you will not qualify for the free dino and then you'll be charged for those hidden costs. So there are a lot of other small things that uh, are hidden. I think if you're using PaaS in general, right, it's uh, basically users beware because there are hidden charges. Right? Even though they say there are no hidden charges, but you know you, you normally don't read all the fine print and uh, yeah, after a while, at the end of the month, you will suddenly get hit with a large amount and then you will know how much it really costs. Yeah, lots of messes around. Uh, OpenShift is from Red Hat. Blue yeah, a lot. Yeah, lot. Yeah, lots of it. Yeah. Other questions? Sorry for the mix-up earlier on. I still don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> ah, yeah.